Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Have you ever woken up some days and wondered, man, I just want to buy a whole tech company today? No, not you. No, not me either. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we've gotten to a point where people are rich enough to wake up thinking that and actually be able to achieve it. Now, a few days ago, we talked about Elon Musk buying Twitter, where he bought like 9% of the company. And since then, there's been a lot of developments. For instance, he hasn't really been sitting on the board, so to speak. He hasn't really gotten his way despite being one of the largest shareholders. And all of a sudden, yesterday, Elon decided to break the entire internet, the finance internet, the finance world, and say, bro, I just want to buy Twitter. I want to buy all of it. I want to buy every single ounce of this disgusting, deplorable website. Now, what convinces one of the most richest men to buy the most insane crack den on the internet? Well, Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the battle for free speech. Now to understand, I wanna just get into it. I'm not an Elon simp. I really don't care about Elon Musk, to be honest. Uh, in the words of Joker from Mass Effect 2, I don't trust anybody that makes more money than I do. So to be honest with you, I don't really think that Elon Musk cares about anything but himself. Elon Musk has created numerous things uh, on the internet. He's made like, he, he's he's taken over, you know, vehicle companies like Tesla. I shouldn't even say that he's like an original person for it. You know, he's created a lot of things in the past that made him very rich he comes from a very rich family and he's also designed things that have been kind of uh, laughable like for one for one instance he has this tunnel company where he's trying to solve traffic by creating like i guess a network of tunnels underneath but it's hilarious how these tesla vehicles guide this one lane and eventually they also still come across traffic jams regardless uh, yeah having one lane in in a, in a road that tons of people are going to use where like the bottleneck is getting people in and out will always suck but i don't know elon's probably going to fix for it hey look I'm not the richest guy in the world, okay? Clearly, I'm not smart enough to discuss tunnel projects. I can only just laugh at the stupidity sometimes that I witness in Twitter videos. I mean, that literally is a goddamn traffic jam. What's really funny is, like, the Tesla drivers are giving a signal, which automatically puts them above BMW drivers, who apparently don't even get a turn signal with their car, at least from what I've seen. Okay, but anyways, let's get back to the thing. So on the SEC Gov website, what you actually got to see was this filing. On April 13th, 2002. Okay, so two days ago, one to two days ago from time of filming, where Elon Musk decides, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this reporting person actually can considers to have proposals to buy all outstanding common stock of the issuer, which is Twitter, not owned by the reporting person for all cash consideration value of the common stock at $54 per share, which is actually far over the estimated value of Twitter at the moment, like per share. So apparently Twitter brought on board like Goldman Sachs, who apparently said, this ain't that good of a deal. Despite the fact Goldman Sachs at some point actually pinned the price target at like $37 anyways, okay, somewhere around that range. So yes, Elon is actually overpaying for the entire stock. So it comes out to something in the ballpark of like 40 plus billion dollars that Elon is deciding to give over to Twitter just to buy out 100% of this company and take it completely private. There can be no assurance that a definitive agreement with respect to the proposal will be executed or if executed, whether the transaction will be consummated. So again, just because he's like, just because this like transaction is being like thrown into the mix, it doesn't mean that it'll actually go through. There's a lot of people involved in Twitter and there's a lot of people that can decide this may not actually be the play. Some could even say that Twitter is worth more than $54 per share, which would be a bit laughable, but not out of the question because Twitter for a lot of investors, big people is worth more than just making money to have the ability to control narratives because think about it like this twitter all right when it runs an algorithm a lot of those tweets get fed to news sites which then purport a certain narrative so to have the ability to have the largest mainstream discourse platform out there is a pretty big valuable thing for people to own so of course in this he sends some letters that you can read right here so he says hey I invested in Twitter, as I believe in its potential to be the platform for spe free speech around the globe, and I believe free speech is a social imperative for a functioning democracy. However, since making my investment, I now realize the company will neither thrive nor serve this societal imperative in its current form. Twitter needs to be transformed as a private company. So he was offering to buy 100% for 54 bucks and 20 cents in cash. So again, Twitter has extraordinary potential. I will unlock it.
Now, I believe Elon wants to get rid of scam, spam bots, and everything, and really promote this platform as a free speech absolute system. And, you know, in his original idea of making things open source, I'm actually all for it. To be honest with you, if the man buys Twitter and actually makes the platform, op not open source, but actually, you know, a platform where people jump in for free speech absolutism, and sure, you know, when it comes to Twitter, obviously there's like clear biases on who can post, who gets banned, and from time to time. We've all seen it, we've all talked about it. It. So to have a platform where I'm okay with people having warning labels thrown on the kind of stuff that they post, but to outright ban and shut down any form of discourse is a little bit questionable and sus. The video I made yesterday regarding Discord malware is a video that basically tried to destroy misinformation. I think that's the best course, all right? When people are spreading misinformation, it's often advisable that instead of just shutting people down and forcing them into their worldview even harder, it's always best to give them logical facts and reasoning and properly educate individuals. Because when you educate people without being a fucking asshole, turns out they might choose to not believe bullshit and maybe enlighten the truth. Things tend to happen, that's kind of the optimistic view that I have. If that's what Elon Musk wants to achieve, sure. But if Elon Musk decides to get Twitter and all of a sudden, every criticism of Tesla, SpaceX, and even Elon himself, you know, you can't post anything negative about the guy suddenly gets mysteriously removed, yeah, that's bad. Listen, a lot of people say, hey, Twitter's a private company, they can ban whatever they want. Bro, Twitter's a private company, if somebody wants to buy it, they can. Listen. We live in a world where individuals have this much cash. If they want to throw it at companies like this in the private world where all is fair and love and war and laissez-faire, then sure, by all means, Elon can go ahead and buy the company. Because if Jeff Bezos can buy the Washington Post, then sure, what's stopping other billionaires from buying entire, you know, narratives, buying entire, you know, social media platforms? I don't even agree with the idea that one person should privately hold an entire platform the entire world uses to communicate with each other. But unfortunately, in the market that we have, this is the world that we've created. And you know what? If we're going to let some billionaires get away with it, we might as well let all of them get away with it. It's either all good or none of it's good is kind of my mentality. Now, again, I'm not an Elon simp or anything. I don't believe that the man can come through with every single promise that he gives. So again, it's really bated breath that you're carrying. Now here in a text message he sent, as I indicated this weekend, I believe the company should be private to go through changes that need to be made. After the past several days of thinking this over, I've decided I want to acquire the company and take it private. I'm gonna send an offer letter tonight. It'll be public in the morning. And then he sends like a voice call where it's like, listen, here's the best and final offer. I'm not doing a back and forth game. I moved straight Right to the goddamn end. It's a high price and your shareholders will love it. And if it doesn't work, then uh, I, I don't have confidence in management. And then I have to reconsider my position as a shareholder, which effectively means I'm going to sell my stock. He'll say it's not a threat and it's simply a good, not a good investment without the changes that he needs to see made. And you know what? It's not a threat, but it basically is. If you're reevaluating your position, you're probably going to pull out any investor would. I would, if I bought majority share, if if I, if I was the largest stakeholder of a company and that company didn't want to listen to me at all, I'd be fucking dipping out too. And if he dips out and throws all his stock and floods the market, it could absolutely drive the price down. Now, again, that price target we saw earlier, this has basically put Twitter in sort of a weird situation, right? Like if all of a sudden they don't accept this price and Twitter stock value drops, they might have done their actual stockholders a disservice. And that's bad. They have a responsibility. So Elon's kind of like, Put them, into, put them into a little vice grip, if you will. So again, you know, a lot of people are freaking out, wondering if this is the end of free speech in a way, and, you know, a billionaire is getting his way. And to a lot of people working at Twitter, there seems to be a little culture of fear that's developing. Now, to be real with you, I actually personally don't think this deal is going to go through, because Twitter has a lot of investments. One of them is the Saudi uh, prince, Al Walid bin Talal, okay, who's actually one of the largest investors in Twitter, one, one of them at least. And he straight up said, I don't believe that Elon Musk's 54 bucks comes close to the intrinsic value of Twitter, given its growth prospects. So again, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, one of the one of the kingdom's, you know, investors right here, basically the kingdom in a lot of ways, has uh, decided this isn't the actual, it's actually undervalued in Elon Musk's proposal. And he may not be wrong. If this is a platform that can control narratives and, you know, censoring it may be beneficial to certain parties, then yes, the intrinsic value may be a lot higher than just 50 bucks a pop for each share. Now again, Elon Musk decided to counter-ratio this 
And I can't believe we're talking about billionaires ratioing billionaires. Where he straight up said, interesting. Just two questions, if I may. How much of Twitter does the kingdom own directly and indirectly? And what are the kingdom's views on journalistic freedom of speech? Brother, uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia does not give a fuck about journalists, okay? Those guys get popped, all right? That's, that's how it works down there. So because of all these parties and foreign money and everything, I don't think this deal is going to go through. There's a lot of pushback from it. And you know what? Elon Musk can easily take the gains that he's caused by effectively manipulating Twitter stock price by putting his clout and name into it, making a killing on the Twitter stock price and using a dark pool because people, a lot of people think that these shares could be sold overnight to the public market. Listen, for billionaires and hedge funds and institutional traders, you have dark pools, which if you don't know in investing terms, these are like private areas where people trade blocks of shares in amongst each other and it's not accessible to the public okay this is like their own pride this is where the this is where the rich people play okay not the plebeian public traders no, no 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 so these shares could easily be traded on a dark pool to other people and elon can get away with the killing and just buy back more tesla stock hell to be real with you what's kind of hilarious about this is he's made a killing on the twitter stock if sold and he just buys more of his actual worthwhile company his over highly valued vehicle company out there that's the funny thing about this so yeah twitter's an interesting situation it's a battle for free speech and i'm somebody that considers myself to be a free speech person i think that free speech is very important and we live in a world where private companies effectively can control a narrative the the west coast of the united states those big tech firms have the ability to control the world's diaspora and the world's discussions if you will and i don't really necessarily agree with all that i think if you know somebody is not outright harming an individual physically you know out, outright spreading hate and whatnot you know racism transphobia all that kind of stuff you know sexism homophobia whatever kind of hate if you will or outright violence then i believe we should not moderate these platforms so heavily as to stifle discourse okay i feel like the problem with social media is it divides people even further right like and it's all algorithms right algorithms want you to keep consuming and constantly getting the content that you want so depending on what side or what belief system you have you'll further be pushed into that and i feel like these platforms need to have you know good moderation to really stop bad actors to really stop bad individuals to stop spam to stop bots but realistically when it comes to discourse between every political religious you know um moral side if you will you know whatever kinds of people it should we should allow free speech we should be people who are pushing for free speech to push for discourse discourse brings us together it allows us to get our feelings out to get our thoughts out to bring people into a sphere and discuss things like individuals like human beings we're social creatures okay taking away that social you know ability of ours is the first step towards bad things and that's just generally where i personally stand okay but for elon musk buying an entire company like this definitely has me a little bit on edge wondering what really comes out of this financial war to be real with you i don't see this going through i honestly think this is going to be a big giant puffin war and it's going to end okay twitter's not going to take this massive deal because of various investors involved but this is one of those free speech battles that I think is going to go down in tech history as, uh, you know, either it wins or it doesn't. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it. If you dislike it, I'm out.